Today, we're going to talk about three different types of stocks so you can start learning and begin on your investment journey. We'll also dig in on some basic metrics that most investors use to determine if they'd like to buy shares in a company. Some of the metrics we're going to cover are earnings per share, price to earnings, dividend rate and yield, and share price. But let's start simple. What is a stock? When a company is publicly traded, they determine the number of shares that will be available to the public for purchase. The total number of shares being traded is called the shares outstanding. As an investor, when you purchase a share of a company or a stock, you retain partial ownership in that company. So the more shares you own as an investor, the larger the percentage of the company that you own. Using a brokerage, investors have the ability to buy and sell shares of different stocks. There's many different brokerages that you can open an account with, and they all have different features. So do your research to see what is most important to you, because they all function a little bit differently. Most investors will own company shares with the expectation that share value will rise or that they will receive dividend payments or even both. And as a result, you'll have an opportunity to generate a return on your investment if the company is performing well and the stock prices rise. However, you are also taking a risk if the company doesn't perform well and the stock prices drop, meaning a potential loss for you. This is a snapshot of a great website called Finviz that gives you a nice visual of how the market is performing and also divides it by sector. Now let's start discussing the different types of stocks. Blue chip stocks are very well established companies. They're the leaders in their industry and have strong reputations in the market. A couple of examples would be Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT, and McDonald's, ticker symbol MCD. Let's start by taking a peek at Seeking Alpha, which is really a great website, you guys, to use to research different companies before you decide what you'd like to add to your portfolio. Let's take a peek at Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT, which most of us have probably heard of and have probably used some of their products. If we do some super simple math, and let's say in the year 2000, you purchased 100 shares of Microsoft when they were trading for around $40 a share. Can you imagine? You would have paid a total of $4,000 for those 100 shares. As of the recording of this video, Microsoft is now trading for $282 a share. So those 100 shares that you bought back in 2000 would now be worth $28,200, which would mean that that initial investment that you made actually would have made you around $24,200. Pretty sweet, huh? But what if I told you it could actually be more than that amount? Let's use the portfolio visualizer to see what happened to our 100 shares of Microsoft over time. We made our initial investment here in 2000, purchasing our 100 shares for $4,000. As we track this over the last almost 21 and a half years through July of 2000, you'll see that we actually end up with $30,000. $542. Now, when I model this in portfolio visualizer, I set it up to reinvest any dividends that were received by selecting a drip or a dividend reinvestment plan. Don't we all wish we bought a hundred shares of Microsoft in 2000? And that right there is why people are drawn to the market. It's for this type of potential. But what is the stock market? Well, it's also known as a stock exchange and an exchange is just that a place for people to exchange their money for shares of stock matching sellers of a particular stock with buyers of that stock, which makes you an owner of that company. So you've got a piece of the pie. As you start researching the different companies that you wish to purchase stock in, you'll need to know how to find them and have an understanding of what a ticker symbol is. When a company decides to go public, they select a ticker symbol based on what is still available to represent their stock when it's traded in the market. And it's unique to one company only. Companies that trade on the New York Stock Exchange can have ticker symbols of four or less characters, while those traded on the NASDAQ can have up to five characters. Most companies will use those ticker symbols to help with marketing and establishing their brand. Pretty sure you're all familiar with these companies and may even recognize their ticker symbols as well. On most stock screening websites like Seeking Alpha, you'll see the ticker symbol beside the company name typically located at the top of the page. Once you start to familiarize yourself with ticker symbols, it becomes much easier to navigate and review the different companies so you can learn more about them. It is imperative that you do your own research before deciding to add a company to your portfolio. 
The second type of stock we're going to talk about are growth stocks. And these are companies that are expected to continually grow their earnings, but at a faster pace than the rest of the market. These companies don't typically offer dividends to their shareholders because they invest any earnings that they make back into the company. These companies will typically have a higher PE, which is the price to earnings ratio. If we jump back over to Microsoft on the Seeking Alpha platform, you can see the PE listed here as 27.66 with FWD in parentheses. This means that this is the forward price to earnings ratio, meaning they're using forecasted earnings, not historical actual earnings. But if we look at Yahoo Finance, they lay out the information a little bit differently. You may just need to try out a couple of different stock screening sites to find the one that you feel has the best information and is easiest to navigate. But in this example, you'll see the PE as 29.32 and in parentheses TTM, which stands for trailing 12 months. So this is a year in review and is based on the actual earnings instead of forecasted earnings. So in the last 12 months, the PE for Microsoft was higher than analysts are forecasting for the coming year. It's important to know where to find information and there's some really great websites that you can use to do your research like Yahoo Finance, Seeking Alpha, MarketBeat to name a few. But if you plan to invest, you need to, a little bit more information on what goes into the PE of a company. So let's dig a bit deeper. To calculate the PE or price to earnings ratio, we need more information about the company. Step one is the share price, which is constantly changing based on market fluctuations. Step two is going to be to calculate the earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, we need to know the total company earnings as well as the shares outstanding. Shares outstanding refers to the total number of shares held by all of a company's shareholders. Let me give you an example. Company ABC's last reported earnings were just over $20 billion with just over 4 billion shares outstanding. In order to calculate the earnings per share, we simply take $20 billion divided by 4 billion, and that gives us $5. So the earnings per share for this company is $5. Now that we know the earnings per share for our company ABC, we can calculate the price to earnings ratio. Let's pretend company ABC is currently trading for $100 a share. If we take $120 per share divided by the earnings per share of $5, we get 24. So our price to earnings or PE is 24. According to Investopedia, the price to earnings ratio relates a company's share price to its earning per share. A high PE ratio could mean that the company's stock is overvalued or else that investors are expecting high growth rates in the future. Companies that have no earnings or that are losing money do not have a PE ratio because there's nothing to put in the denominator. Now let's do the math with our Microsoft example to really drive this home. To calculate the PE, again, we need two things, which you can find here on Seeking Alpha. We need the share price, which is 282.91, and as of this recording, and you also need the earnings per share, which is 10.23. We're simply going to divide the share price, that 282, by the earnings per share of 1023, and we're going to get that PE of 2766, which you can also see right here on Seeking Alpha. I really think that as you're learning, it's important to fully understand the relationship between the numbers. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is the dividend rate and the dividend yield. Now, the dividend rate, again, with parentheses FWD, means forward. So this is what the company will be paying for every share that you own. The dividend yield, which you can see here, is just under 1% at 0.86%. And yield is calculated by taking the dividend rate, in this case, $2.48, and dividing it by the share price of $282.91. And that's how we get our 0.86% yield. I actually have an entire video dedicated to understanding yield and how it's calculated. Check it out if you want further clarification. But this brings us to the third type of stock that we're gonna talk about today, which is income stocks, and my personal favorite thing to invest in. 
I saved the best for last. Why do I love income stocks? Well, they tend to offer lower volatility and regular steady income in the form of a dividend. Now, what is a dividend you ask? Well, a dividend is a cash payment, which is a portion of the company's earnings that is issued to its shareholders. Most companies will pay out their dividends quarterly throughout the year. So for example, you might get your dividend payment in the month of January, April, July, and October. Some companies pay semi-annually, and there are even some that pay a monthly dividend, which are really nice to have in your portfolio. But how do you decide which stocks to add to your dividend investing portfolio? Well, personally, I've learned to look for stocks that fall into the dividend king or dividend aristocrat categories. A dividend aristocrat is a company that has been providing and increasing their dividends for at least 25 years. A dividend king is a company that has been providing and increasing their dividends for at least 50 years, but they do need to meet certain criteria to be considered aristocrats and kings. I recently put out a video of six stocks that fall into the dividend aristocrat category that are paying between a three and 4% yield. Definitely worth checking out as a starting point for where to look for some potential stocks to add to your portfolio. Now, why is dividend investing beneficial? Well, for one, it provides the investor with a passive income stream. If you stick with dividend aristocrats and kings, you'll be purchasing shares in companies that have consistency and therefore less volatility or risk. Dividend stocks also provide a hedge against inflation by generating a rising income stream while also appreciating the value. And that takes us to the power of drip. DRIP is an acronym for Dividend Reinvestment Plan. The first step, if you so choose, is to enroll in a dividend reinvestment plan. By doing so, your brokerage will receive the dividend and automatically purchase more shares of that stock. And over time, as you increase your position in the company by adding shares, the amount of dividends you receive will also rise. Now, some investors who are more hands-on actually choose to turn the drip off and receive their dividends as cash, which then allows them to select how they want to invest their dividend income, perhaps on stocks that are selling for less, or perhaps they're at a retirement age and they've decided to use the dividends to live off of. And that's what I'm aiming for. With income stocks come some important dates that you should all be aware of. First is the declaration date. This is where the company announces the dividend amount that has been approved by the board of directors. Next is the ex-dividend date, and this is the date by which you must own shares of the stock to be eligible for the dividend payout. The record date is set by the company where the investor must be on the company's books to receive the dividend payout, and the payment date is just that, the date on which you'll receive your dividend payment. I really hope this was helpful to you all. As I mentioned, dividend stocks are my favorite. And if you'd like to learn more, I'd love it if you'd follow along with what we're purchasing and the dividends we're receiving each month, because we've got a goal of creating a solid passive income stream through our dividend investing. Check out these videos for more information. And as always, stay hopeful and be well.